Hey everyone, this is Agar. I'm going to be going over the Diablo Immortal Paragon system, uh, show some information about it, give some tips and some advice, but you're going to be tailoring this to your own builds. Uh, those that have played this game with me may know me as Ravriel, or Ray is what most people tend to refer to me by, but uh, let's go over some basics just to give a little bit of background for doing Paragon trees. Uh, so. In general, these are your main stats, and in Paragon, the only main stats that you're going to be able to improve are your damage and your life. Everything else in Paragon is going to go towards armor, armor penetration, potency, resistance, and then there is one oddball option that's a little different that goes more into your inventory space. None of the selections in your Paragon tree are going to affect your combat rating. Uh, to affect your combat rating, you would have to have something to your strength, fortitude, vitality, willpower, etc. However, since everything is generally geared toward these four things here and your two main stats, it's not going to impact your combat rating. So, damage increases damage dealt to enemies. It also oddly increases healing and absorption effects. I'm not sure exactly how. Uh, I do know with uh, Frozen Heart, that's based, the absorption is based on your damage, so more damage the better for that. Uh, however, I'm not sure what else is going on there. Life, lose it all and you're dead. So that's, that's that, it's life. How much of a beating can you take? All right, so going into armor. So armor reduces all damage taken and increases your blocked amount. So mine, as a demon hunter, is low. I have a glass cannon build, and so my extra reduction is zero, and enemies have an increased crit hit damage against me. So I am a piece of paper. Uh, armor penetration. So this is one that I have focused on getting high. This increases, ignores some enemy armor, and increases critical hit damage. And so my crit hit damage just from armor penetration is increased by 40% from baseline of double, so essentially 140% based on this. That does not include other gear options. Potency, uh, so this is compared to enemy resistance and it uh, helps with uh, like CC effects. So necromancers probably would like this quite a bit as they are heavy on CC, uh, whether it's fear or stuns or things like that. And so having higher potency is going to increase your duration against other players. Um, and then resistance is somewhat the opposite of that where your resistance will reduce durations against monsters and other players that try to use CC against you. Um, mine's actually a little higher than expected, which is kind of nice, so it's not completely terrible. But anyway, those are the considerations to, or things to think about when you're doing your Paragon tree and picking out what you want to do. It is going to be heavily dependent on class and how you like to play, whether you're playing a support type character, a damage dealer, or something more in between. Uh, so you'll have to tailor that to yourself. All right, so let's get into the actual Paragon Trees. So interesting thing here. So Paragon Trees, you can, based on the selections, you can increase your damage by a maximum of 4,000, your life by 38,000, your armor by 520, your armor penetration by 480, your potency by 420, and your resistance by 360, and your inventory rows by five, depending on your selections. If you had 900 points to completely fill everything out, you'd get all of that, but that's not the case. So one of the first things to know is that anything with circle shaped here is a permanent bonus. So here, permanent attributes. Once learned, this attribute bonus is always applied to your character. So you do not have to have your trees active in order to get these bonuses. So that generally includes potency, damage, life, armor penetration, this odd deeper pockets option. However, it does not include anything that is square. These are skills that are only available to you if you make this tree active. So by making this vanquisher tree active, I can get zeal and wrath. 
Now, the thing about the Vanquisher tree is it's generally dealing with damage to monsters and fighting with monsters. So everything here, it's monster, monster. Each monster you feed, for each monster you feed. Increase damage to monsters. And then Wrath and Zeal can stack 15 times. So all of these skills are directed towards mobs. So it's not gonna be players. Uh, so PVP, this isn't going to be helpful. Uh, now, I generally tend to go more for the permanent attributes because then it doesn't matter which tree I have selected, I get those attributes no matter what. As you can see here in the Vanquisher tree, I seem to be focusing on the damage aspects, which is what I go for. Uh, because again, I'm running a glass cannon build. Uh, others may want to go more for life and things like that. So here, I ignore this top line because I don't care about potency. Deeper pockets, while nice, isn't going to help me that much. However, damage is going to help me quite a bit. And then armor penetration is going to give me that increased hit, uh, hit critical hit damage. So I don't generally go in and try to fill out any of these. Uh, others may do this differently because they want certain skills. Once again, I got life because I had to, this because I had to, more life, but I wanted the damage. And so I took the quickest path to get all the damage. Um, others may change that up. Maybe they want more resistance. Maybe they want some of these abilities. But again, here in Survivor, this is about staying alive. I'm, again, a glass cannon. It's not super helpful for me because even with some of these increased uh, helps to, to my life, I'm still just going to die quickly if I'm getting hit. I try to keep distance and uh, do enough damage to kill them first. Uh, Treasure Hunter. So this one is based on if you're world, far world, wor world farming. Uh, if you're world farming, then this is going to be helpful. You get increased drop rate from monsters, extra gold, uh, extra globe drops, increased treasure find and lucky. Um, but other than that, I just went for the damage and I will probably make my way over to armor pen the armor penetration over here soon uh, once I have enough points. Gladiator. Gladiator is probably the one that I keep active the most uh, using this for PvP. But you can also see that I didn't necessarily go for everything in this, right? Because it, to go for everything, I would have to put an extra 15 points into potency, which I don't care about right now. I would have to put an extra 20 points into armor, which I don't care about right now, just to get Trapper and Rapid Recovery. I don't know how much Trapper helps. I doesn't seem to be super helpful in PvP for me, so I... I'm not going to spend the extra 15 points in potency. I'm going to put those 15 points elsewhere. Uh, same with rapid recovery. So trapper and uncontrollable by 10 seconds. I mean, that might be nice because uh, I, I ignore loss of control once every 30 seconds. It would take it down to 20 seconds. While nice, I don't think it's worth the extra 21 points to spend. So I don't do that. Instead, I still get... I still get uncontrollable 30 seconds. I still get quick-witted, so reduces the control of effects. And I need that to get over here to damage anyway. And then wanted to cheat death because cheat death is awesome. If you don't know that, try it out. Okay, so next up we have Soldier. Soldier is having party members within certain distance gives you benefits. Now... As, as a demon hunter, I'm not always that close to party members, right? I'm trying to keep distance. Uh, in fact, I use a gem that increases damage the farther away from an enemy I am. So soldier's not too helpful for me, so I don't care about it, and I just go for damage. That's went straight to it. I could start getting life. Um, I will get this armor penetration soon. Uh, so for me, I'm probably going to go damage, get all my armor. I, I actually have gotten every single damage option. So my damage is increased by 4,000 over what it otherwise would be. And then I'm doing armor penetration, and then I will go life. Others like to do life and damage together. 
Uh, that makes sense, especially for those that do more tanking, you're going to need more life. Um, for me, it's it's not as helpful as it might be for other people. Okay, so soldier, we got mastermind. This one, the skills are geared towards having parties with four different classes. Uh, this takes a little bit of coordination uh, and can be helpful. However, one thing to consider is this is only good for maybe one person in the party to utilize because this effect is not cumulative, cumulative from multiple sources. So if multiple people are running Mastermind, you are wasting some of your skills. So again, not cumulative. This is the one that you could benefit from regardless because this doesn't apply it to other people and it's just for you so that could work um, but again uh, and the vulnerability is good as well so those two are good but the rest of it tends those other two are cumul not cumulative and this again goes towards the cumulative one so you have two skills that could be useful if multiple people are using it but otherwise it's only useful for one so Mastermind's probably not my favorite there either. Massacre is again dealt towards monsters. Um, so kill streak is grant speed. You're not gonna get these kill streaks in PvP so much, but could be good for you know for doing challenge rifts or something to that effect. Uh, once again, damage. We have some life over there. Armor pen. Brawler. So Brawler, this is this is all elite monsters. Um, I can't remember what all counts as elite, um, but it could be useful in those situations. Again, uh, it's not something I'm too worried about. Um, it also requires party members to be close to you. Uh, or, well, it requires you to be close to monsters, which again, as a demon hunter, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so, but this could be good for barbarians and or monks, those kind of things. Duelist is one that actually looks like it could be interesting, and I think I need to try this one out a bit more. Uh, so you have Bloodthirst. Uh, so that does deal damage to monsters, so that would be only good in, you know, uh, PvE. However, some of these other ones aren't necessarily. This is damage increased by 2%. That's across the board for anything. Doesn't matter. So that could be interesting. Uh, Fury increases your critical hit chance by for 10 seconds. Um, so critical hit chance regardless. So again, not monsters, could be anything. Uh, then we have this static discharge that when Bloodthirst and Fury are removed from taking damage, you discharge lightning to five targets. Again, anything not just monsters could be interesting and then let thirst and fury stack up to 10 times so i am a little curious about trying this one out in some pvp situations you would lose your uh, cheat death from gladiator but it might be possible that this could help output more damage if you're not concerned about cheat death anyway so that's pretty much the paragon tree uh, focus on these permanent attributes that will always be active and then be be selective about which skills in various trees you want to go after figure out what works for your situation um, and go with that again I right now just do keep gladiator on all the time I'm not worried about the other bonuses but that may not be the best for everybody or may not be what you want to do. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Uh, figure out what stats will best benefit your uh, character, your class, your play style, and go after those. Uh, yeah, that's the basics of the Paragon Tree. Have a good one.